so good morning. We're here, uh, obviously, at uh, this, uh, obviously, way station uh, with uh, Deputy Commissioner Ross Barnett, and uh, it's great to have uh, Peter uh, Garski here in relation from the uh, Australian, sorry, the Queensland Trucking Association as the CEO. And uh, I'd just like to say that uh, with the with the finalisation of Australia, sorry, with the finalisation of Operation Austrans, it is uh, great to see the continuation of the trucking industry and the Queensland Police Service working in partnership to keep our roads even safer for the mums and dads and all Queenslanders right across this great state. And we will continue to ensure that we keep our roads safe and uh, make sure that uh, we have a strong plan and a bright future, ensuring that our road users are kept safe. Because at the end of the day, it's working in partnership that we can get results. This operation uh, obviously has been a, a month-long operation and uh, once again, uh, whilst we have seen a, uh, a few people do the wrong thing, on the whole it has been very successful and uh, it just goes to show the great partnership between the, uh, the Queensland Trucking uh, Fraternity and the, uh, and the Queensland Police. But most importantly, these operations will keep all Queenslanders safe. It'll ensure that uh, mums and dads and families have the peace of mind knowing that the industry is working in with the police service and the Department of Transport to ensure all road sorry, to ensure all road users are, uh, are kept safe. It so, seems that the, um, yeah. the biggest increase in offences are in fatigue offences. Is that a worrying thing? Look, uh, fatigue is part of our fatal uh, five and we will ensure that uh, that people uh, obviously uh, have the full force of the law come their way if they uh, want to put other people's lives at risk. But uh, as with fatigue or seat belts or speeding, these are all conscious choices. And uh, But people out there on the roads, where you're driving trucks or driving any uh, home vehicle, is uh, you need to know that uh, if you do the wrong thing, police will be there, they will catch you and you will go before the courts. The Transport Workers Union says that there seems to be a lot of pressure from above, from employers to you know, get the job done quicker, that sort of thing, in tough economic times. Is there anything that the government can do to, to keep those employers in check? Look, uh, we have seen magnificent results from the, uh, obviously, the, the Queensland Trucking Association working hand in hand with the government to ensure the safety of all road users. And I just want to compliment the trucking industry for uh, their, the way that they have been able to work in with the Department of Transport and the Queensland Police to ensure the safety of mums and dads on our highways. Right. Sorry, Ross. Thank you. Uh, look, Operation Austrians. Uh, which has run uh, nationally for the last 12 months. It's an annual event. Uh, this year in Queensland, we intercepted over 12,500 trucks. Um, of those drivers that we intercepted, there were 230 odd speeding offences, 127 offences for not wearing a seatbelt. There were uh, 790 odd offences for fatigue related issues, and that is a concern given that, uh, that these drivers are driving uh, very heavy and very large vehicles, so it's important that they're uh, alert and concentrating on what they're doing. So, fatigue issues certainly is a concern. On top of that, we did uh, nearly 11,000 random breath tests and over 1,000 uh, random drug tests. Uh, the detection rates, I've got to say, were fairly low. There were 20 uh, drivers affected with uh, drugs in their system and 11 uh, positive uh, drink driving uh, offences. Of course, that's a concern, but we've got to keep in mind the overall number of trucks that we did intercept in, in, uh, in terms of the volume of those offences. What would you say to those drivers who are, um, are ris risking their lives, I suppose, and, and the lives of others um, through these fatigue-related offences? Well, look, most of these people I'm sure have families and I would just uh, remind them that uh, we have a shared responsibility we're on the road and uh, we all have a responsibility to drive vehicles that are, are roadworthy and to make sure that we are in personal uh, tip-top shape in terms of not driving with your drugs, alcohol and particularly fatigue. And if you're going to be fatigued in charge of a very large vehicle, uh, the possibility is you're going to do a lot of damage to some other innocent family. 
Is there anything in particular that you're, you're quite impressed um, with? Any any um, improvements? Well, I think overall, you know, for 12,500 trucks intercepted and drivers tested, the enforcement rates are relatively low and we're very pleased. And I think that shows that the vast majority of drivers and owners are very professional and take their responsibilities very seriously. But we are concerned about that small element. We, we had one driver who was intercepted who'd been driving for 12 hours straight. He had a very young child in the truck. They're the sorts of things that concern us. There aren't many of them. But when those things happen, the potential for really serious consequences are obvious. Do you know how we compare to other states? Uh, look, I don't have the interstate comparative data with me at the moment. That's okay. Um, okay, and where else did we see increases? So there was a, a slight increases in speeding offences. Is that a worry? I mean, when you're behind a big heavy haul truck, that can't be good. Absolutely. Look, speeding's one of the fatal five. We're concerned with cars, motorbikes, anybody who speeds. But obviously, as I've said before, the size and weight of these trucks makes uh, any, uh, any speeding offence or any breaking of the road rules that much more serious because of the consequences that can come from it. The, the drug driving, what's behind that? Is it, is it trying to stay awake? Or is yeah, it... well, traditionally uh, the industry has had a problem with the use of uh, amphetamine type stimulants to keep drivers awake who uh, are not prepared to observe the law and take the required breaks. Well, that's been a problem that's been ongoing for some time, but as I say, um, the relatively low detection rates would suggest that that's not a widespread problem inside the industry. Any other outstanding cases that stood out to you? You mentioned the bloke that drove for 12 hours straight. Anything else? Look, there are, with nearly 800 fatigue-related offences, there are other stories like that. So that's always a concern for us because uh, some of these drivers clearly uh, are under pressure to drive beyond um, the legal limits whether that's imposed by anybody else or, or something they consciously choose to do themselves, only they know. But the consequences of that for the rest of the uh, travelling community can be significant.